All right, guys, I apologize. You're going to have to bear with me because I'm about ready to do quite a bit of talking. I was working on the core support over there. I ran out of mid gas on it. I knew I was getting close. I had enough to tack in the panels, but that was it. So that core support's over there. It's just chilling on my frame, waiting for me to get some more gas to finish it up. But at least it's out of the way now. I decided to go ahead and jump into this firewall. I'm going to start trying to get it prepped for paint. And the wiring, as you can see, is just not quite up to... Uh, uh, what I would call my standards So I've also Going through fixing stuff like that. I'm also trying to delete off what I don't need And this thing was a 1985 it had a smart carburetor and what you would call a smart distributor on it Them have long since been deleted. It's got an Elderbrock 650 on it and it's got a one wire HEI distributor So the first thing I started with was this wiring harness right here where it comes out of the firewall the sensor up there is also a tip-in sensor. It was with this harness. None of that's going to be used anymore. And what that was for is whenever you would start to accelerate with this vehicle, it would retard your timing so you wouldn't get a spark knock. And as I stated, with that stuff being deleted, I don't need that harness no more. Here's the old harness. That was the old distributor plug. It also had a ground coming out of it, a power source, and then it also had a knock sensor on it. All that's been deleted off there. It had my tape on here, so I knew exactly what they went to, so it made it a little bit easier deleting it. But all that's going to be junk. So now I've started with the temperature sensor. It has one on the block, or not the block, sorry, the head. This is for my driver's side head temperature sensor. I'm going to keep that because that's what works the gauge on this truck. And there was another one. It had two plugs on it. Here it is, that's the splice. Then it had two sensors on it. And it actually controlled a vacuum port. And whenever you would get temperature, it would open the vacuum ports up and let vacuum go to various things on the carburetor and other things. Like I said, don't need it no more. I've already plugged the holes where them sensors went on the head, or the intake. So that's taken care of. Get rid of that wiring harness, make it look a little bit better, make it simpler. And the last thing, it took me quite a while to figure out. I had a two-prong plug here that went to an oil pressure sensor. Had it labeled there, so I knew it went to oil pressure. Three wires coming off of it. And the one green wire was not attached to nothing. Still don't know exactly what it went to. There it is. Never been plugged in. It was all dirty, corroded. It was just hanging out. Don't know exactly what it went into, but the other two wires went into the junction panel there. And from the best research I could do on this and the wiring schematics, that was used for your electric choke. It would have to see oil pressure to send power to your electric choke. I guess it was for somebody that would turn the key on. That way you wouldn't lose your electric choke by the time you started it. I, I don't know. I'm just assuming. Also, there's something to do with the dummy light on it. I think whenever you got low oil pressure, it would throw up an electric choke light, and that would let you know you had low oil pressure. But from what I've decided is I don't need it. I did leave the two wires long over here on the junction box, because if that electric choke light's illuminated on my dash whenever I get this truck going, I'll know I needed to put them two wires together, and that'll make a connection in there, and should, should hopefully make my light go away if I got one. If I don't have a light, everything's fine. I'll end up cutting them shorter whenever I get to it. But everything's cleaning up pretty good. Can't beat that. Got my one wire oil pressure switch or uh, sensor there for my gauge. So all the gauges should work. All the other wiring should stay. I just got to get it in looms and make it look a little bit better. But all in all, pretty happy. It took me, whew, I bet you two and a half, three hours just to figure all this out. But... Better to take your time and find out what you need to delete, what you can't delete, instead of having to try to trace wires down and splice back in later on. So I'm pretty confident in it, but when we do a will it run video on this thing and I go to start it up, I might have all kinds of problems. So we'll find it out then, but I'm going to get back to work. So thanks for bearing with me.
All right, guys, we're back at it again. I've taken about a month off this truck and didn't do a bunch of filming. I just started up again on it. I'm not a body man, so I did not want to video this driver's side, me fighting my way through it. But I did get this rocker put on, got the cab corner put on, everything ground down, and it turned out decent. I'm decently happy with it. Had to put in a panel back here, too. This was all rusted out. Had a manual bead roller, worked out pretty good. I think it blends in pretty nice. But anyway, this side's about 90% done. And now I'm gonna get started on this passenger side. Here we are working on this passenger side over here. And I'm doing this side a little bit different. The other side, I cut this very precise. It took me forever and I butt welded it together. Was talking to a guy about it. Ended up cutting this, did not take my time with it. I got a filler piece in behind, which is actually the top part of this rocker panel where it used to go up to about there. I cut it off, put it inside, so now I got a sleeve. Now whenever I bring this up, I can leave a quarter inch gap, weld in from both sides. That way I don't have to grind my welds down. It should be stronger and should help with warping a little bit. So I got that one set in there pretty decent where it goes. Got my door hung so I can get my gaps right on this truck. And got to get the back in here situated, got to get it up in place, do the same thing, get a filler panel made. And once this rocker's in, everything's good, put that cab corner on, get it tacked in, and she'll be off to the races. So let's hit it. Alright guys, here's the deal. I didn't film the whole driver's side putting the cap cords and rockers on because I've never really done much of this work. I've done a little bit of mechanic work in my day, a little bit of fabrication, but as far as making stuff all nice and pretty, that's all new to me. So I'm trying to build my confidence up. I showed you guys the passenger side, what I did on it. And what I keep telling everybody is this truck looks good from 50 foot away. Maybe my next one will look good from 40 foot away. So 
I'm trying to learn this. Bear with me, stick along with me, and we're going to get through this. So thanks for watching.